you have this tool called Oracle Space Cube Builder, which allows you <coughs> to build your cube right out of your data warehouse. So you, you can use your OBIE repository and the data which exists in your data warehouse to build a cube right out of, right out of it. Uh, my name is Abhinav Banerjee, and I'm a BI architect working with KPI Partners. My session today uh, in Collaborate 2012 was on the Oracle S-Base Cube Builder and OBI applications, a perfect solution in the making. The session talks about both how you can install and configure Oracle S-Base Cube Builder and how you can generate and populate your S-Base Cube using, your, using the Oracle S-Base Cube Builder application. So, a brief overview of what OECB, it stands for is Oracle S-Base Cube Builder and is available as part of the OBIE media pack. We don't have a 64-bit version available as of now. We, you can only find 32-bit version which is available. The latest version of the uh, Oracle S-Base Cube Builder which is available currently is 11.0. It allows you to extend S-Base capabilities into OBIE applications. <laughs> now one of the good things about this product is you can directly use your Oracle Business Intelligence Applications repository and you build a cube right out of it. So the various features, it provides seamless user experience between SBase and OBIE. The, meta the metadata and the data changes can be managed across updates. So one good thing is say, uh, you, you have a BI repository and you are in the development phase. After two or three weeks, uh, there are a lot of changes in it and so using this tool, it will allow you to compare the two repositories. So there is, you can define various versions of OBIE as well as your S-based queue. Let's have a look at the OECB architecture. It's basically a Java-based application which uses a mix of logical SQL queries, a few XML files, and JDBC connections to fetch data from your Oracle BI source and populate your S-based cubes. The various components which are included is there is OECB underscore AMI dot bat, which is a batch file and which has got all the content in terms of your data execution and the data load process. You have a BCP root for, uh, file <coughs> which generates the, the, the data file. So it's like uh, whatever data exists on your data warehouse is uh, the data exists in the form of dimensions and facts. And on your S base, you have got a set of dimensions. So before you load data into S base, you will have to generate a batch file. You will have to generate a, a data file, and that data file is generated by OECB VCP root dot bat file. And once the data file has been generated, you will use Maxel scripts to load your S base queue. So next, let's have a look at OBIE architecture. Now this is 11 G R. 11G architecture, so you have got the, the your uh, Java Enterprise Edition Server, which is your web, web logic, and then you have got the presentation services. You have got your BI presentation services. You have got your, your Oracle BI scheduler. You have a BI Oracle BI server, which uses Oracle BI administrator tool to rule to read Oracle BI repository, and you have a cluster controller, which allows you to uh, take care of load balancing. The, the various components which are included are your BI server, your BI presentation services, your BI repository. Now, there are a lot of other contents which are, a lot of other components which are part of your BI infrastructure, but I have included only those parts which interact with Oracle s base Cube Builder. So, the, the two main, main components which are used by Oracle S-Base Cube Builder is your BI server and your Oracle BI repository. So uh, your Cube Builder uses the, the repository to pull in all the metadata. And then for Oracle S-Base Cube Builder to be able to generate the data what exists on your data warehouse, it needs your BI server to be up and running. So, and all, so here is the the Oracle BI applications architecture, you have got a set of <coughs> modules like sales, service, uh, marketing, and these are the various <coughs> data sources you can use, the various OLTP, 
applications like e-business e suite, PeopleSoft, and you <coughs> then Oracle BI applications as such uses your OBIE platform. So this model is your the, the BI server layer. And then <coughs> you have got a lot of reporting options which you can use, which includes dashboards, ad hoc analysis, Microsoft Office, and you also have the OBIE on mobile at present. So using mobile adapters, you can even view it on your, say, iPad or iPhones. Now once again, here I'm only talking about the components which actively interact with Oracle SBase Cube Builder. So you have got the SBase Administration Server. This component allows you to manage the SBase Cubes and perform other administration activities related to the SBase Server. Your SBase Server, it's a online analytical processing server. It's one of the market-leading multidimensional databases. And then you've got Maxwell Cell Scripts, which is used to load data into your SBase Cubes. <laughs> We have got three install options. You can either install it in a standalone mode, or you, you can install it as a as base administration services plugin, or you can install it as a J2E server. Now, if you are installing it as a as base administration services plugin, then before you do that, the, you, you will have to first install the standalone implementation. The next step would be your as base administration services plugin installation. Uh, there is a file which you can execute, which is OECB underscore AMI. And that is the main, yeah, your Oracle Space Cube Builder. So this is the actual screen, uh, how your tool will look. At present, I've taken screenshot where you've got all the options which are there. So I had already imported the contents. But in the beginning, it will all be blank. So you have got three panels there, which is your your, your task panel, your selector panel, and the content panel. <laughs> so the task panel, which is the, the very first panel, it shows the various tasks which you will have to perform to be able to um, populate your S-based cubes. Your, uh, the, the middle panel, which is your contents, it, it basically shows the, the various objects, say your RPD and your S-based cube and the various contents, and by that I mean within your BI repository, you've got three layers, physical, presentation, uh, BMM, and the presentation layer, and it shows all the contents. On the similar lines, it also shows you the, the, the bottom option where it shows S-Base, and within your S-Base cube, it shows you the various dimensions which have this been defined. This shows you the, the, the various steps which you might have to perform. Uh, the, 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 the very first option on the top left hand side browse OECV metadata. Now if you click on that and collect and click on an option on the middle screen, it will show you the various objects. During the session today, uh, we talked about how we can use Oracle as base cube builder <coughs> to populate as base cubes using the data and metadata which exists in your Oracle BI repository and your data warehouse. The one most important point which which the audience can take from this session is how you can use use Oracle S Base Cube Builder to get data from to get data and metadata from your Oracle BI repository and data warehouse and populate your S Base Cube.